Hello and welcome. Our top focus remains on Kenya. Despite a dramatic U-turn on tax hikes, anger against President William Ruto is piling up. Protesters have hit the streets again in Nairobi for a peaceful demonstration. They are demanding President William Ruto's resignation. Police once again fired rubber bullets and tear gas at demonstrators. Dozens of protesters marched their way to Nairobi Central Business District. Security remains heightened in the Kenyan capital, with roads to the presidential palace blocked. The protesters have vowed to occupy the state house, which is the president's official residence. Devastating because how this guy has taken everything away from us. Now we have nothing to live for, for sure. So right now we have nothing to lose but our fears. The youth-led protest movement has given Ruto the toughest challenge of his two-year-old presidency. The protests that began as online condemnation of tax hikes have snowballed into mass rallies demanding a change of leadership in Kenya. Amidst the massive public outcry, the Kenyan president took a surprising U-turn on Wednesday. He announced that he will not sign this year's finance bill, which introduces multiple tax hikes. Having reflected on the continuing conversation around the content of the Finance Bill 2024 and listening keenly to the people of Kenya who have said loudly that they want nothing to do with this Finance Bill 2024, I concede and therefore I will not sign the 2024 finance bill. Though some protest groups consider Ruto's U-turn as a big victory, many still believe this is not an end to their movement and there remain more goals to be achieved. The protesters remain skeptical about Ruto's latest move and are calling it a PR strategy. On how Ruto has taken the situation, you know, this guy is very clever. You know, even though he has refused to sign the, the bill, Definitely after 21 days, it will become a law, meaning we'll have to adopt unto it and as the youth, we'll have nothing to do. Yeah, so what I will say to my fellow, fellow comrades, yeah, we are, we, are, we are still going for this until we get what we want right. Ruto's announcement came after week-long protests over tax hikes in Kenya. The youth-led protests largely remained peaceful, however, took a violent turn on Tuesday when police resorted to firing live ammunition on demonstrators who breached the barricades of Kenyan parliament and stormed the compound. Angry protesters even set a part of the parliament building on fire. They also set alight the governor's office just a few hundred meters from the parliament. At least 23 people have died and dozens have been injured in the violence. Reacting to the chaos, William Ruto had said that the demonstrations were hijacked by dangerous people and vowed to take a tough line on violence and anarchy. The situation also caught international attention with several nations, including the US, Canada, the UK, as well as regional and international bodies urging for peace. Ruto, while withdrawing the bill, said the move will lead to a significant hole in funding for several development programs. He had deemed the increases necessary to reduce Kenya's massive debt, which equals around 70 percent of the country's GDP. So it is to be seen how a leader who came to power with a promise to navigate the country through the economic hardships now delivers while facing an unprecedented political turmoil. For more on this, we have with us governance and security analyst and tax justice activist Stella Agara, who is joining us live from Nairobi. Thank you for being with us on First Post. Thank you for having me, Alison. Now, despite a major U-turn by William Ruto, protesters are back on the streets of Nairobi. The police once again fired tear gas at the protesters the people on the streets are angry and they want President Ruto to go. Can the Ke Kenyan president manage to quell this anger? And what should he possibly do next? 
Um, he has a huge task ahead of him. He has a really, really huge task. Quelling the anger of the citizens right now is not easy. I think yesterday, this, he spoke a little bit late in the day. When I say late in the day, I mean the day yesterday. Because uh, throughout the day, the Gen Z and the young people online were planning for a one million march today. So de-escalating that within a night was going to be almost impossible, which is what may have resulted in the protests today. There are definitely other interests that have now come into this conversation, and I think this is something that I'm on record having spoken in on different spaces, that there are other interests that have now come into this conversation. People who have now realized that the, the group that was protesting against the finance bill has been able to make him kill. And of course, this was a natural thing that was going to follow this. He has the task of convincing Kenyans that uh, the, the, the commitment he made yesterday of withdrawing the bill is actually a, a, the truth because he is on record as having lied a lot uh, to Kenyans. And so Kenyans are waiting to see what he's going to do, especially because parliament is going to recess. There's a procedure that needs to follow his refusal to accent. Then the document goes back to parliament. There's a procedure that needs to follow this, and uh, Kenyans are not confident that he's going to get time. In the absence of this process, after 14 days, there's a mm. fear amongst Kenyans that this, this uh, finance bill would still come into, into law. And this is why many Kenyans are still on the streets today. He has options. He has options, number one, of negotiating consistently with Kenyans. Number two, and I think this is the most important, to speak to his mem the members of his party. His team, his people are still being rude mm. to Kenyans. There are some of them who have, even up to this morning, are still being very rude to Kenyans. And, and, and that is something that Gen Z will not take cannot take and of course it's something that has gone with this particular uh, protest that we've had in kenya and so the the sooner his mm. people and himself accept right. that this is a different Kenya, that they're speaking to a different group of people and we are not negotiating about the finance bill we are negotiating about a new kenya which will involve fighting corruption dealing with the, the runaway corruption that has been in the country and ensuring that all the officers who have not been delivering and have been rude to kenyans are actually sent home with immediate effect yeah, right. And Stella, the Kenyan debt is still extremely high and the cost of living crisis for people is worsening. What options are available to Ruto to ease this economic crisis? When, when, I, when I stopped, I'd actually just started giving you the options that are available to deal with the debt crisis. One of them is to first do a debt audit so that all Kenyans know what we owe. A lot of taxes have been collected in the name of repaying taxes, but then uh, repaying debt, but most Kenyans don't even know what debt this is. Number two is to make sure that we deal with corruption. Corruption is contributing to a lot of wastage in our government and, and the government, uh, uh, the president's gov government must make sure that they, they, they cut down actually bring an end to corruption because they need to save all that money that gets lost in corruption to use it for development. The other thing that they need to do is to make sure that they, yeah. as they're pushing Kenyans to, lead, to engage in austerity, even they should start demonstrating that they're also exercising uh, austerity. So this business of, of, of driving lavish cars, fuel guzzlers in the name of serving Kenyans needs to come to an end. The last one has got to do with ensuring that then they're creating a conducive business environment for investors to come in and invest and also for Kenyans to actually be begin to invest even as they, they, they find their way back on their feet after this economic recession. Mm -hmm. All right. And Stella, in your view, just how damaging have these recent protests been to Ruto's popularity? Is there a real threat to his presidential term? There is a fundamental threat, threat to his presidential term. On Tuesday last week, the president still had room to come and negotiate with Kenyans. On Tuesday last week, he still had an opportunity to come and discuss just the economy with Kenyans. By the time we got into the weekend, his, his, his security team now got into abducting Kenyans, especially those who had been seen online to have been mobilizing for the, for the protest. And he held on to some of them until the start of the protests uh, um, on, on Tuesday this week. Unfortunately, by the time uh, these groups were going, were going for the protest this week, he was still holding on to some of them. This is a sign to Kenyans that he has no goodwill. Unfortunately, this has been the characteristic of his administration since last year. Uh, I should in inform your audience that see, last year we had similar protests concerning the finance bill. He was imposing new taxes, but majority of Kenyans did not know the import of that particular finance bill. So they, many of them did not come out to protest mm -hmm. and some of them felt it was a disturbance. But two months, three months after they started feeling the pinch, of that finance bill. So this year, Kenyans have come into this conversation more informed and more equipped because they've suffered in the last uh, period of, of 12 months. 
and now he finds himself in a situation where he was insulting right. people who have been struggling they had gone back to one meal a day they have watched his 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 government you know embezzling funds using resources for expensive watches expensive cars fuel gaslers that are mm. fueled by kenyans and, and 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 paid for by kenyans and he has also set up a very very um, um uh, huge uh, uh, cabinet that is unnecessary because he added other positions and he was proposing to add even more people that kenyans are supposed to pay so he's in serious trouble he is in a lot of trouble his team did not investigate and yeah. figure out and understand what gen z are about and so unfortunately they've misunderstood every single step about this group they have no leader there's nobody that is going to be able to negotiate with and bribe like he has done in past years um there's nobody that is going to actually be able to to arrest and lock up and end this thing because every person he has arrested, every person who has been abducted since the start of this campaign has not stopped the resolve of Kenyan citizens. And unfortunately, yes. different groups are all in support of this move. So he has quite a task ahead if he's to maintain uh, the integrity of his right. office. Stella, thank you very much for being with us on First Post Africa and your valued insights there. Thank you for having me.